It's okay, let us know if... So we teleported to the other CERN site? Yeah, which is site. even more in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Um, actually, in the middle of the trees. Yeah, we can show them a bit. Yeah, we have bambies here. <laughs> what else? Rabbits sometimes? Yeah, we have uh, deers. There's a bit of everything, but certainly it's a pretty green spot. Yeah. Actually. Uh, now we're heading towards the CCC, which stands for CERN Control Center, Center, which is one of the coolest thing ever. Uh, but <laughs> we'll... Um, yeah, we'll take... Um, I don't know why the gimbal is making like a weird thing. No, actually it's not. <laughs> I know how to do this stuff. We'll wait a bit. Uh, so please, when you're, when someone is there, just please tell us that everything is fine, because we're having, we're having some issues just because the, this site, oh, shower me, so someone's back. This site is actually in the middle of France and Switzerland. And yeah. it's kind of a mess because there's some issues with the with the thing. Switching the roaming. Yeah, switching. I have a French SIM card and my SIM card was roaming onto the Swiss network. For and Antonio has a Swiss SIM card and his SIM card was roaming on the French network. For no on reason. the same yeah. spot. Like bingo. <laughs> exactly. And of I course we were getting that, yeah. very low cellular reception on both. So we're back here. Vittorini is also there. Yeah. Sporting his Twitch, his Twitch shirt, his <laughs> best shirt. <laughs> straight from TwitchCon. So yeah, we're back. Allora, com'era questo diretto del CERN? Se sei ricco. Ciao pezzo di nerd. Ciao trash. And we're back with 1,400 people. Let's really? <laughs> no, come on. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> welcome uh, back. Welcome. Okay, so we moved from the old location. It's not the old location. Like the main location of CERN, that is Meran, to this one, which is Preve Sun, where actually there are far more controls about the machine. It's a very sunny day. This building here is the CERN And this center. building is the CERN control center. Okay, and we'll... Shortly, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes, maybe, to people to come back. We won't go straight yeah. in. We have to also... Uh, we'll make a pause, maybe we'll have a, a short chat uh, about uh, everything. Maybe you can explain uh, some of this stuff. But yeah, this is one of the newest buildings at CERN already. Yeah, I know, I know, no, no. This is the new cafeteria. Yeah, but yes. no one goes there. No one goes there. Okay. Let us know if the connection is fine again. We're having some issues with the... Di eccoci, ciao Fabio, ciao. And... Um, this is the CERN control center that has a very cool logo. I have to say. It's also a very cool place. It's a very nice spot. Oh, I think... And we have to understand how it works. So... Yeah, there's a long queue, but we hope that. Hi. Hello. Hello. So we're from the press for this event. Yeah. Um, I am in contact with uh, one of the volunteers in the control. Yeah. In the meantime, Vittorini, what do you think about the day? Tell, tell us your thoughts. It's a pretty yeah, exciting. exciting day. Are you pretty uh, yeah, same day also for all the people that are watching? Uh huh. Yeah. And. Uh, we are pretty energetic, we are tired, but we have we uh, super tired. rested a little bit. So we, you I hope have you enjoyed uh, the streaming, if you watched the stream, of, uh, the official stream from the You have to know that Daniele here is actually just graduated, like just got his yes. master in particle yes. physics. Yes, and, I, and can you explain a bit about your thesis? My thesis. Talk about your thesis, yeah. I, so, I, I, I was not prepared. You're I not prepared. I, I, I Come forget on. So, uh, the, the, the fact is that my thesis is in collaboration with CERN. So we use some of the technology that we have seen in the first part, uh, or the, sen the, the sensor that were developed here at Sony, and we use it for uh, medical uh, applications. We are uh, building a new type of uh, uh, positron emission thermography, which is an imaging uh, technique, a medical imaging uh, technique. And we use some of the technology that is developed at Sony. I was just doing a simulation of the scanner and... Uh, just, the, come on, yeah. it's a pretty... Image reconstruction, which was very cool. Image reconstruction, come on, that's very really nice. nice. It was very good. Cool. But I'm finished. Okay, maybe you can, uh, so just to say that uh, this is um, the, there is the theoretical research, there is everything, but there's also a lot of uh, practical and uh, application of what we, 
was is developed here at CERN. Yeah. Which is very important. Yeah, because... We just enter from the exit and uh, we can have a chat with our friend here. Okay, <coughs> makes sense. Uh, we go right now, we wait a bit more. We wait two minutes okay. and uh, then okay. and then we go. Okay. Th- thanks again for, for everything. 1,200 people thank you as well. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I can call my... Yeah, we're 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 kind of uh, it's not sneaking in because we got contacts inside. We've been working here for a long time. So, I mean, we have uh, we are doing something useful. We are bringing the open days to people that cannot can cannot be here because this is a this is an open um, this is an open event. Yeah. So sorry, you can see me. Yeah. This is an open event, but of course you have to be in Geneva. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's useless. Yeah. And, there's, and there's many people that come to Geneva just for this. Uh, I've seen them around, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's nice from our side uh, to, to, to kind of share these things that seems kind of normal to us because we've been working I mean, here yeah, to share them with you. Everyday life. It's routine. part of our the everyday but life. I mean, there's like, if you go, like, if you look at that street, there and you go straight and then at some point you turn on the left there's the barbecue area of sir yeah, yeah. there's the very famous barbecue area where we always had the parties and stuff and for us it is exciting I mean, maybe i can sneak inside and see i can sneak peek inside and see yeah okay 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 go go check go check the stuff yeah flavio is is going on a mission in the meantime we can enjoy maybe a bit the center CERN Control Center. So we can give a bit of an explanation about what it is. Uh, this is where all, uh, you know, you know, in movies when they show those big control center like the NASA with lots of screen and people working and checking and pressing big red buttons. Yes. Uh, this is basically this, but for well, we blue the LHC. Exactly. Oh, we have red <laughs> buttons as well. Also red button. Yeah, yeah, in order to dump the beam. Ah, yeah, of course. But they have yeah, to be yeah. red, otherwise they don't work. Yeah, exa- <laughs> exactly. I mean, blue otherwise, button yeah, doesn't you work. Can push them you can push as it. Ma- as many times as you want, but still. It just means we've known it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And this is also a new building that they just, they just finished. Uh, it's kind of nice from the architecture point of view because as you have seen, many of the buildings at CERN are kind of old and it makes sense because they don't want to lose time with... Uh, you know, building new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> There's yeah. research to do. But yeah. in case um, they need some new, they try to make it nice. Coming back. We good news. Okay, we, we we have to wait a bit. It's yeah. fine. It's okay. So what do they do here? Yeah, I gave a little bit of an explanation, okay. but you can do it better than me. Really? Because you know, I said that it's like a big, no, big <laughs> evil guy uh, lair where he controls everything with lots of screen. You know, in, like in movies, like the James no, Bond okay. guy. Splex means the PS. The booster and the Linux, this is one of the part of the thing, okay? So the Linux, the thing that we saw, and then the small accelerator that I showed you at the beginning <coughs> of the previous stream, then the SPS, which is the seven kilometer one, and then the LHC and cryogenics. So inside the room is split into four zones, okay? One for each of the accelerators, plus one for the cryogenics, so the cryo of the LHC mainly, okay? <coughs> and every, every group has its own, what we call shifters, okay? So here, when the machine is running, there are people 24-7 that are, um, that are watching that the state of the machine is correct, that there are no issues, and if there are issues, they can intervene, they can operate the machine. If they have uh, serious problems, they can call experts on call. And so they <coughs> basically take care that the machine works well and that we can have good data for the physics collisions, okay? Maybe, maybe we can do this a little bit of explanation also in Italian for our Italian viewers. Yes, of course. Allora, questo qui è il CERN Control Center, quindi è la, diciamo, la sala di controllo di tutti gli acceleratori del CERN. In particolare, al suo interno troviamo quattro zone, una zona per ogni acceleratore più una zona per la criogenia, prevalentemente di LHC. Quindi abbiamo una zona per l'HC, una zona per l'SPS, una zona per il PS Booster e una zona per la criogenia appunto. <coughs> e <coughs> qui quando la macchina è in funzione abbiamo 24 ore su 24 um, persone che appunto sono in turno e controllano che lo stato della macchina sia uh, ottimale e che la macchina sia in grado di fornire uh, buoni protoni diciamo per avere delle ottime collisioni per la fisica che poi alla fine è il fine ultimo di dell'accelerazione. dell'accelerazione ok allora stiamo, stiamo ancora aspettando un po' il, il tutto come vedete c'è un sacco di gente fortunatamente fra prespasso che ci è stato dato gentilmente dal CERN più 
uh, conoscenze varie <ride> le abbiamo negli, accumulato negli anni uh, dovremmo essere in grado so yeah as I was saying in Italian we were just waiting for our uh, turn for our uh, guy inside from my insider to let us yeah, in so we can just start we can try to look, because probably the guy is busy guiding another person, yeah it's guess. fine maybe if the uh, we can we can just go in and see if First, I have to find him because the room is pretty big and it's pretty crowded. By the way, thank, uh, grazie il vero pala per la sub. Ok, ok. Voilà, no, on peut pas le visiter. Vous pouvez juste voir le, le, la porte. Et c'est le PR13. Quand vous allez au PR13, les Here you can already see a bit of the control center, how big it is. And now we'll get inside and show you more. Just uh, one second. It's very calm. Bonjour. Merci. C'est gentil, merci. Ok. Yay, we're in. There are four areas. Okay. You have to, I think, talk a bit louder. Yes. So, as I was <coughs> telling you, my voice is going out. There are four main areas. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, this is the... So, that is the SPS, right? Yeah. On so, the, on Stefano the right used side. to work for the SPS, so, kind of. So, we kind yeah, of... Uh, okay. He's yeah. not much more knowledgeable than me in this regard, actually. So, maybe he can... Yeah, yeah Stefano, give us... Yeah, here on the on the right side, we, we can we, go there. Yeah, um, let's say as Flavio was telling you before, the control room is split in in four circles, each one controlling uh, um, a set of accelerators. For example, here the one you are looking at is the SPS. So in, in this part of the CCC here on the right, you can control the the SPS machine. So everything from Yeah, I mean the machine status, the magnet status, the beam status, and so on. Then on the very, at the very end of the room, on the, yeah, there, under the screen. Uh, no, 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 on the right, here, the one you are looking at. But at we can go, we can, we can probably move yes. and show oh, them. No, let's, show them, let's show them the status of the machine. Okay. So those so, screens, yeah. they do display the status of the accelerators. Of course, this is now a demo because the machine is not running, okay? It's, They it's, put a demo for the open days. It's, it's like actual data, but just exactly. old. It's, it's just data, recording it's from old. So, basically, on the right here, this one with the black, uh, yellow and white lines, this is the SPS. So, what so we SPS see? stands for Super, Super Proton Synchrotron, okay. which is one of the rings yes. Yes. of the... It's the 7 It's the seven, so it's the, the second, second biggest. biggest. Okay. The second biggest, so, yeah. Two Nobel Prizes. Two Nobel Prizes to build it. <laughs> okay, so if you look there, what you see is the white. So this is the what is called the super cycle of the machine. Okay, so this line goes on and this is time. Okay, and then the particles are turning and according to what the machine is doing, you see what you see here. Okay, then the white line is the energy. Okay, so basically the the magnets of the machine, so the energy of the machine. So if you see, you start from very low, then it goes up. There is this ramp. Then it stays flat, it's called flat top, okay? Even though this is for the extraction, okay? It doesn't matter. And then it goes down because the beam is dumped. And then the yellow one is the beam, so the beam intensity. You see, there is, the beam is in bunches, so you have the first bunch, boom, then the second bunch, boom, second uh, like yeah, step. Sta step. Yeah. And then you have the beam intensity stays flat because you are accelerating. Then when you are at flat top, you see that the beam intensity goes down. Why? Because this is a special profile of the machine for uh, what is called the slow extraction. So basically what we do is we inject a beam inside and then instead of just kicking it out in all the bunches into the LHC, we take out the particles gradually and those are used for other experiments, for example, for tests. Okay. okay. <coughs> They ask how many people are at CERN. Uh, let's say around... In this moment? No, not, no how many this? personnel? So, so uh, member of the personnel I think is around... Thousand? No, it's like probably it's about 5,000 members of the personal plus another 8,000 of users. And it's very difficult to get a precise number because there are many people that are working for external universities and they have a badge, but they may not be 100% here. No, they just come here when they need it. So it's a bit difficult to give an estimation, but around like 
a bit less than 10,000. So yeah, okay, so you see, Except maybe... maybe, maybe <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you, you, you can see that basically the whole... Um, sorry, I'll just try to straighten the camera a bit. The, the whole room is divided into these four rings. Each ring is for one of the main accelerator plus the one for cryogenics. So is, cryogenics means the part that takes control of the temperature. You know that, uh, we, we told it before, but basically the, big, the, the, the great part of the magnets that allow both the acceleration, no, the acceleration are more electrical, but... Yes. Um, the, the, also, al those are or also those are superconductive. So both mm -hmm. the acceleration and the uh, curving of the particles inside the... Um, the, the particle accelerator are done on superconducting um, regime. That means that we lower the temperature at almost the absolute zero in order to obtain better performance from on um, uh, let's say from the uh, from the resistance point of view. Yes. Because in order to create the magnets, in order to create a magnetic field, what we do is that we pass a very high current inside of them in a very high voltage. Tens of kiloamperes. Tens of kiloamperes. For those you may... And if you do that without cooling them down, they will catch fire in milliseconds, possibly. <laughs> and so we. I think you cannot even reach that. Current. Yeah, you cannot yeah, even yeah. reach that current, and it just goes like that. And so cryogenic is a big part, because if, the, if those magnets are not um, adequately uh, cooled down, uh, operation is not possible. Yes. Um, let's go, maybe we can go, because yeah, now we're we kind of in the back, side. we can go on the side and maybe show you some of the screens. I'll do like a kind of... A of course here there are many screens and there are many people at the time of shift. Yeah, exactly. There's always someone here. There's always yes. someone. And I will try to show you a bit more from the center of the room. Now before we didn't want to like bother people too much. But here you can see, for example, this is the ring for SPS. So from here... Yeah, it's written here, SPS. Ah, there and um, and these are all the screens that allow uh, certain people to take you know to have a to have a kind of an overview of the machine in order to see any issues problems and stuff like that That's, they control it they control it what are those switches? Oh my god, <laughs> so many switches. Those are emergency ones. I mean, some are, yeah, most of them are possibly emergency and stuff like that. And then maybe we can... Red buttons we are talking about. Here, for example, this is the LHC, so this is the biggest ring. But it, it's almost it's almost the same. So you can, you can see one very funny thing about these... Uh, the various rings is that uh, SPS was built in the 80s 70s 70s okay so you see that okay. the, the kind of graphic and computer used also the screens haven't really been super updated mm -hmm. so there's still like four thirds and they no, there are four thirds but there are like some you know 69 no, you see can, the graphic that they are better more screens. they can put more screens yeah okay. also, there was That's a big right. fight in the HCB for now we switched to 16 by 9 and there was a huge fight many people wanted, <laughs> wanted to keep four thirds so you see four thirds leaves on at sir uh, <laughs> but you can see how how it also technology has changed yeah. for example the, the emergency switch panel that that's the original one that's the original yeah. from the 70s and you can see that the one from the 50 the one from the 70s and the one from, and the, one from, from the, the 2000, mid 2000, 2000. You, see, uh, you can so yeah, they they switched from buttons to kind of a touch screen. This is very cool. Exactly. And here, this is the, again the control part for the LHC, which is the biggest rings, the biggest ring of the of the accelerator. So it's the more modern one, but you can see the the amount of information that's on the screen. It's you know kind of similar. Again, it's 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 this is recorded. It's not live because now the ring is not. Uh, active uh, and um, so yeah you see I mean there's there's screens everywhere to allow the shifters people that work here 
uh, there's always someone here like working 24/7. And um, okay. hello. hey, hi, Eric. Hello. So, is this a press? Yeah. There's 1,400 people looking at you. Can you give us a little guide of the thing? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a, that's the thing. Okay, cool. So, no, just, if you can, of course. If you can. If you can. No, sure, sure, sure. I can. I can. <laughs> I, I was giving uh, just an introduction to some other people. So you are just entered the LHC corner of the Sun Control Center. Uh, so from here we control the LHC accelerator at CERN when it and when it works. Right now we are of course in the long shutdown period, so it's off. So you don't get any beam inside, but what you can see on all of the screens, maybe you can pan over the over the screens, you can see uh, an actual screenshot from the from the time when the LHC was doing, mm -hmm. uh, was was acting, was providing collisions. So what we do here, we uh, maintain and we provide as best as possible beam uh, beam quality for the experiments. So fundamentals of, of research is to perform and to conduct research in the same conditions. So we have to provide always very similar very similar conditions very same conditions i would say even, uh, for the for the for the, for the experiment so what we tackle here we act uh, we act if something is wrong with the beam trajectory so if, if the beam trajectory is, is getting disturbed like for instance here if you can zoom for instance we have a certain pattern here this is a disturbance which okay. we can find and we can fight against we start we need to run a certain algorithm to find to find the uh, the solution for the for the for the for this the, this perturbation and we can find it we can apply it and then if you run here a proposed solution gives it perfectly smooth line mm -hmm. which is a, an ideal and um, welcomed orbit so trajectory corrections is one thing uh, intensity and, and, and profiles controls. I mean, we have to be sure that the, the profile of the beam shape, the beam shape, the profile uh, of the beam, longitudinal and transversal, are the same. So basically, uh, we can apply certain uh, by by certain means some magnetic field uh, in form of a, of the different pole magnets, six to four extra pole magnets, in order to in order to stabilize to to, 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 to stabilize the beam, and this all results in the in the good conditions for the beam. To enter the collision, collisions in the in the experiments, four of the big experiments. Let's see. So, okay, there, there's one big interest question. in the chat. Uh -huh. They ask about the bottles. Oh. <laughs> I know you're talking about you know big machines and stuff, but Bomb. they ask about the bottles. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you had it ready. You yeah. knew it. <laughs> So, uh, first of all, those bottles are a piece of history. So each of these bottles which are standing over there are labeled with a customized label, uh, usually a gift for certain achievement at the, at the CCC. So this one, this particular one here is from Atlas in 2012 for a certain amount of data collected, uh, collected within the certain time. And Fentobarns, yes. So they all create a great history line <laughs> so if you if you ever uh, are doomed with your lockbook electronic lockbook you can rip off this <laughs> and try to reconstruct the time <laughs> One day, one day, a certain oh, archaeology. Yeah. One day, yeah, when they'll try exactly. to find out what we did exactly. here. Because here we work hard, but we also celebrate. We we play hard, <laughs> work hard, play hard. Yes. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> they asked. Also, there was a lot of interest in regarding the what kind of system you use. Some people spotted some. Of course, most of these things run uh, Linux distribution, yes. Yes. and uh, but someone spotted also the Windows. Say, oh, they still use yeah. Windows. The Windows <laughs> is not an evil. Uh, we still use it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in uh, a little part. In very not, little part. <laughs> but we, we still use it. I mean, the the, uh, the actual industrial control is all made uh, in the in the in the Linux environment, and we provide all the well, most of the applications are in-house developed. So we do have Java, Python, uh, Mathematica, MATLAB, all this sort of uh, business developed. Operational is considered still Java and Python only, but uh, people use different different scripting languages, different different languages to develop uh, applications. And some of you, you can see here, which in 80 or 90 percent are developed in-house here by us, by physicists, by computer scientists, who are seeing a need and yeah, seeing sure. what you need to have to, to simplify your life because uh, I still remember the, the old days where you had to do many things manually and now progressively we put all automation, automation here. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. great. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> thank, thank you very you, much. You very we much. will take a quick look around yeah. and then move to the next one. <laughs> the chat says hello. Uh, thank hello, you very chat, much thanks. from 1,500 people. Ah, great. <laughs> Ciao. Yeah, Ciao. 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 <laughs> He's a very good skier. <laughs> <laughs>
Ciao Gabro Cecco, benvenuto. Uh, ok, so here we have the cryogenics. So I was talking before about the importance of keeping uh, of keeping the the accelerators and in general the, all the superconductive uh, stuff uh, well cooled down. And of course they have their own ring. And I always love the graphics of this because they come straight out of a Bond movie, I think. <laughs> Look at that. Maybe, maybe I can show them on here a bit I just sorry <laughs> I just wanted to show you this okay let's go okay should we go we have to go I can, I can call uh, Roland and we can go to Dune to Dune let's go yeah. let's give it a look to Dune we, we walk a bit so this right? thing clo uh, yeah. the, the, the open is closed at 6 is that right no, Are you Maybe sure? Seven. I think it's seven, seven, six. I don't know. Okay, we'll stay here until they kick us out. <laughs> That's for sure. And this is just to close the fourth ring. It's this what's PS booster. PS booster. Okay, so it's so the, the first, and the, the first and the second and you can stadium. See, for example, from the graphics that things have been done in the past, of course, properly, yeah. so it still works. This is a great achievement. Huh? You have yeah. an accelerator that has been working since the 60s. Actually. Yeah, exactly. That's always amazing. It's the same accelerator it's been working since then. We show you Ruches. And um, <laughs> no, it was just inside joke. <laughs> so, thank you. And now we're heading out. And we're moving to... Because, yeah. Why open this bed broke? Really? Oh, yeah. oh no. Broke oh. bed? Oh, it broke. It broke. I mean, we invest in the quality of the so, yeah. research and of Say hello to the control center. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back one day. I'm pretty sure this is going pretty well. I'm I'm hoping that this could be like a um, a tradition. I cannot be such tradition. Uh, you have to know that we are uh, like um, <coughs> normally we're a retro gaming channel, so this is kind of new. But since we all all the guys that you see here work or have work, here we are. Look, the dream team. Cool. The dream team. <laughs> work, work, or have work at CERN. We, we, we thought it would be nice to show this part of the world with you in this uh, special day where basically whole, the whole of CERN is open for people to, to see. Mm. So, yeah. For free. I don't mm. know if for free, yeah. It. For free. If for you are in the Geneva area tomorrow and you want to pass by. Yeah. Pass by. Or take a plane. But, but Who maybe. cares? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that's a bit pushing it. Where is Dune? Dune is, Dune is in the north area. area. The, ah, so it's near an A62. Near the barbecue area. Yes. Near the ah, so we have a lot to walk. Uh, no, oh. damn it. We have no. to walk from, from back? I mean, from the barbecue area? No. I don't no. know. I don't know. We could show the barbecue area. I've always loved the barbecue area. Yeah, it's a bit... Yeah, the, I mean, we'll walk a bit, but yeah, let's do it. No, the problem is, if we don't get the right side, then we have to go all the way around because we cannot cross to the area. Yeah, can you call Roland, maybe? Uh, I wrote him a message. Okay. Actually, he probably has a cell phone. Yeah. And we we should have the... brought skateboards, they said. Yeah, yeah, that's... yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> that's probably a good yeah, idea. No, you know what? It's forbidden. It's forbidden. Yeah, you're right. You cannot bring them. Uh, even um, scooters, walk. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to you walk. Have to you, have to that's walk. you have to suffer. You can show some power converter there. Maybe? Power oh. co ho, ho, ho. Yeah, because here... This is the main power point for the LHC. Okay. So basically, how much does it... I think it consumes more or less... The full accelerator complex and CERN, it's 260 megawatts, I think, when it's running. Okay. So it's basically one nuclear power plant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just for this. A, a decent yeah. one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the I think energy, it consumes energy. the same amount than, than, than the Geneva Canton. Something like this. It takes... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it consumes a lot of energy. Like, a lot. Uh, Ok, I'll switch briefly to, to Italian just to maybe say a couple of things. Questo che vedete qui, questi enormi trasformatori, vabbè, mo c'è un po' il container davanti, quindi si vede, si vede un po' meno. Um, sono il punto in sostanzialmente principale in cui arriva l'energia elettrica per il funzionamento della macchina di LHC. Quindi potete immaginare che e da solo l'LHC. Ah, la perché è vecchia, è vecchiotta perché non è super conduttiva e quindi giustamente consuma un sacco di corrente e, um, e niente, quindi qui è il punto principale in cui arriva 
la, uh, dal... la, um, diciamo la, la fornitura elettrica e poi viene uh, distribuita all'interno di tutto consumando più o meno come ah eccoli qua sono qua con i random numbers con i random numbers Power converter These are, Questi sono i convertitori sostanzialmente Vengono utilizzati per trasformare l'energia elettrica dalle linee ad alta tensione Fino a quelle del... Um, cosa? What is the main power source for this? Hydro, thermal, nuclear? I think nuclear, because uh, it comes from France. Do buy, no, we do buy electricity from France and Switzerland. Uh, this is not specified in the contract. So... Whatever fits them. Whatever, whatever France thinks is a good... Ah, oh, this is a self-driving vehicle. Ah, oh, this is a self-driving vehicle. Yeah, look at this. Oh, so cool. We test it. <laughs> Crash test it. Crash yeah, test it. It's only V2, start walking. <laughs> you live long enough, no? It's, it's a little bit slow. That's only... Yeah. They say, why do we accelerate protons and not neutrons? Because neutrons <laughs> are neutrals. Neutral, and neutral particles cannot be either accelerated or bent. It's kind of a mess. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a mess to work with the neutrons. The only Let's way of producing neutrons is either with a proton beam, for example, at CERN we also produce neutrons, or other beams. Spallation. Yes. Spallation source. Spallation or source. Or with a nuclear power plant, basically. Those are the only two ways of producing a high flux, so a high neutron number source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, now we're kind of uh, slowly walking in. This is again the Prevesan area, so it means it's like the the second big the second big area. So it's oh, actually the certain. biggest. It's actually yeah, it's biggest in terms of area, but maybe yes. there's a little less stuff. No, there are more there are more like experimental facilities than offices. Ah, you know? uh, okay. There is, for example, all this huge experimental area, which is a. Uh, so when I was telling you in the CCC that the beam is extracted slowly to use in other experiments, the beam extracted slowly goes here. Okay. Uh, it's used for either tests, mm -hmm. but there is also an... Ooh, okay, protodune. Um, sorry. You have the Wi-Fi here, no? Yeah, it doesn't work. No? No, no, the normal Wi-Fi. The CERN Wi-Fi. The CERN Wi-Fi. It seems to be a bit better now. Sorry guys for the issues, but you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mess. Let us know if now it's better. We can show you now from the inside the big building. <laughs> yeah. No, we <laughs> just went we can show all you this. around. Yeah. This is a huge ass. Hangar here. Now it's good. Ora funziona meglio. Adesso vado a Dio. Oh, finally, guys. Okay. Sorry for before. Oh, There's no connection. Oh, and here we have our guide. Our guide. Hey, man. Hi. Ciao. Hello. 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 Hi. Roland, Say hello guys. to 2,600 nice person. 2,600 person. <laughs> <laughs> hello, don't guys. put your pressure higher. How are you? Roland, Ciao. Nice, nice to meet you, man. Ciao. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Are you ready, guys? Yes, yeah, yeah, born, born ready. We actually went around the building two times. <laughs> <laughs> so we are at Protodyne in the EHM1 extension of uh, CERN. Uh, basically, I will need to start with an apology. I'm not a physicist, I'm a computer scientist, but I was uh, commissioning also the single phase prototype of Dune and I uh, was working for the data acquisition system and I know some things about the detector, so hopefully it will go well. What we do you guys... Told them <laughs> <a lot of laughs> physics, they are a bit fed up with it. Yeah. So neutrinos, I will cut it really, really short. So neutrinos are uh, extremely abundant uh, particles and we know really uh, few things about them, but still there are like uh, trillions of neutrinos passing uh, through our body in a given second all the time. But still, there are a lot of mysteries with it. 
So there was uh, something that was begging for building a detector like this to uncover and discover, you know, these uh, secrets that neutrinos uh, carries. So there is a new flagship experiment of the USA that will be look like uh, the following. In Fermilab uh, near Chicago in Illinois, uh, there is a long baseline neutrino facility because human mankind is capable of creating neutrino beams and also anti-neutrinos. And then a bit uh, 1,300 kilometer traveling through rock, these neutrino beams are arriving to huge uh, liquid argon cryostats that are deep down with 1.6 kilometer in an old, uh, not used anymore, gold mine where uh, we are constructing the liquid argon TPCs. And this is in the uh, Samford underground research facility in South Dakota. If you know the president uh, uh, statues with the four presidents, it's really close to Ah, them. okay, to Mount Rushmore. Yes. So, this is about physics, not the hard <laughs> comes the interesting part. This, that's a clean room, right? Um, it used to be a clean room, maybe, yes. It used to be. There are a lot of activities. The idea is that now I will guide you through, guys, on, uh, on the base protodune guide, and we will spend some more time in the control room to see how protodune was operated, and uh, the, the whole control system and the vehicle. And then you can probably also will join for other activities. There are some really nice ones. Uh, few things about how CERN is uh, connecting to the UNE experiment. CERN gives an excellent and, and great uh, possibility because the infrastructure and the logistics are given. And we also have uh, a beam line from the SPS, so we can build uh, the detector capable of taking a beam. This is essential to uh, characterizing and uh, evaluating different readout technologies uh, for the time projection chambers. There are two fundamental prototypes built, the dual phase and the single phase that we will see also from the, from the floor. Uh, okay, we but can... they are really working in a bit different way. The single phase prototype is relying on a bit older uh, but really reliable technology. Essentially, it's a condensator. You have a cathode plane that you apply high voltage to, and then you have sense wires. What is happening in the liquid argon TPCs when the, a neutrino is passing from the uh, decaying atom, there is charged particles getting out, and so they are traveling in the liquid argon, the, it, there is ioniz ionization is happening. So electrons start to drift towards the sensing wire so you can have the X and Y coordinates. But there is one problem still. You don't know the depth. Imagine if your particle is going like this way or even this way, but you don't see the angle. You don't know how deep it travels to or from the center. Therefore, uh, we need to figure out uh, uh, this uh, missing uh, coordinate basically, but it's really simple. Because you know that in 180 kilowatt, the electron drift lifetime is 5 milliseconds. So you are covering basically the full drift length in the whole cryostats, both in this way, 5 milliseconds, and that way, covering the whole uh, TPC, essentially becoming a huge 3D camera, because then you can reconstruct the event in three dimensions. TPC stands for Time, time Projection chamber, 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 which is a kind of detector. Measure, you measure the time that it takes for the signal to propagate, you know the velocity of the signal, you know where the signal came from, more or less. The dual phase is working in a bit different way because then the, uh, the gathering layer, the sensor wires, instead of the sent wires, you have an anode and the readout in the same uh, construct. So the drift is happening upwards, but it's a novel technology developed in CERN, and uh, hopefully it will be also one of the chosen technology for one of the super modules. And here the resolution is extremely nice thanks to the amplification technology how it operates. There was even a prototype of the dual phase prototype that was proving that it's possible and it uh, operates really stably. We have some issues with the dual phase at the moment, but hopefully by the end of the year everything will be sorted out and also the detector will be fully functional. <laughs> Here you see some pictures. Basically. This is how it looks inside. Inside, exactly. Amazing. These are the gems for the dual phase, and this is the single phase detector. You may ask why is this strange uh, pattern mm -hmm. is here on the on the membrane? 
this is a patented uh, solution for, from a French company. This is that, uh, that big ships that are transporting gases or uh, liquid material uh, are having inside to endure the huge strain so they are not uh, get destroyed from the strain that... Uh, uh, ah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. So it's like to not bend. So it's to no like kind of uh, compensate for the pressure, for the outside yeah, pressure. Exactly. <clears throat> Minimize it. Nice. Here you can see some uh, event displays. This is real uh, events from the beam run of the single phase uh, Dune prototype that happened in 2018 Q4. So, so these are, yeah, these are, it's a reconstruction are, of, yes, the, yeah, of the particle. Yeah, you have the neutrino you don't see and then you see yeah. the production. What happens? Yes, what what happens. happens? And of course there are decays that are uh, signatures for different neutrinos. Yes. Yeah, these are more, more trucks. Yes. We are walking now uh, along the, the beam line that is shielded with concrete blocks. Yeah, and you... Here you see those uh, green uh, uh, big magnets. Yeah, those, I think they can see it. Boxes. So those are the magnets that is helping us to steer the beam to the right direction. Mm -hmm. And we are hitting basically the single piece of the pipe. Which is, and here you see also the beam plug. This is the beam plug ah, that that's is the little entering. thing on the back. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of probably hard to see in. Uh, but yeah. And the white box is the cold box where we characterize all the annual plane assemblies. Because constructing those uh, APAs, there are big robotic arms that are winding the three different planes. And it's 24 kilometers of wires that consist from one single APA. We have six in the single phase uh, prototype. And of course, constructing these uh, uh, apparatus is pretty sophisticated. So some of them made better than the others. So we were really careful after the characterization, we placed the noisy channel ones to the back of the detector. So it's not affecting the, the beam run the main beam. for better visibility. Also, small thing, I worked on that thing. That's what I, what I did at the, 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 the metal detector. box, ah, the radiation yeah. detector. So yeah, that that metal box contains probably. Do you know if they upgraded already to the new version or is still the I'm old one? I'm not sure. I ah, okay, that's fine. That's okay. I left certain three years ago. So I don't. I don't know if they made any progress with that. Here is where the detector is powered from. We have a really uh, powerful uh, power supply <coughs> that we maintain 180 kilowatts. Okay. Uh, because uh, to to keep the the electron lifetime, uh, the five millisecond. There is uh, impedance monitors there. The mm -hmm. detector has its own ground, and also the building has a separate one, because any kind of short could be potentially dangerous for the detector. If we damage the electronics inside, it's not that easy just to remove the liquid argon, then cooling it again. It's just uh, really a waste of uh, time, money, and a lot of, lot of effort. So we really need to be careful. That's why also the reason that the data acquisition system is completely electrically isolated from the cryostat. So on the end you have six bulky uh, optical fibers from the six APAs that you connect to, to different readout technologies and you have the full data stream of the detector that you need to process in commercial servers. In the DM. Okay. So just to give you a brief example why optical fibers, for example if you have your television connected to the antenna with a normal wire and then you have a lightning striking your antenna, the current will go through your television and it will destroy it. If you have an optical fiber, this will not happen because the optical fiber is not conductive, it only transfers light and the light will not destroy your television. Okay? Unless... Unless... And this is the impedance monitor, I don't know, it's just what he said just before. To, just to have the idea, you know, oh. and this is only 4% of the detection layer that they are planning for one super module. In June, so imagine this doubled up oh God. and repeat it to the other side and 20 times to the other side, and that's one super module. So, the structure that we saw in the picture before is actually inside here, yes. Okay, perfect. So it's it's a huge block of uh, metal, the big Lego box yeah. The big Lego box, it's actually a big Lego box. I don't know if you yeah, can you see it clearly. Always the coolest because they have the biggest. Uh, yeah, they have to be the big. Need a lot of space in order to go big or go home. Okay, is yeah, neutrinos. Is that are, it's very difficult for to make them interact with particles, <clears throat> with matter, and we cannot see the neutrino itself. 
so basically the probability of a neutrino to interact with an atom is very low. So what we do is we put many atoms. So we, we need a huge we, we put big stuff. So I need to do stairs. And you can see Flavio Sass now. <laughs> I, I, no. <laughs> Stavi a morire, a merda! <laughs> Fa il coglione! Ok. My nickname is collateral, now you know why. <laughs> exactly. So the other is a better view. Ah, the ok, perfect. Hello there, the hi. The single face prototype and then now you see the glimpse also on the dual face. Yeah. Also the cryogenic lens, I will explain soon the feeling of the dual So the cryostat uh, feeling, it takes approximately a full month. Okay. Because what is happening, it's 770 tons of, li uh, of argon. And uh, how you ship it here, there are uh, trucks, lorries, that they are transporting 20 tons top. So in multiple ships, in multiple circulations, there are two big silos outside. And it's shipped in a gaseous form. And then the cryogenic plant is responsible to slowly uh, cooling it down and injecting the liquid argon into the cryostat and filling it completely. On the top you see different readout systems and also the electrical fibers that on then goes to the data acquisition barra and we read out the whole detector with three racks so with a handful of servers. Okay. Here you see in this picture, like in this will be one super module, one Got six kilometers down in a gold mine uh, in the excavation. So we see just a small block, four percent. This is one super module, and there we have four. Four of these. Yes. Oh my god! And this is even smaller. So it's yeah, this is uh, half. So it's basically eight times this. No, this is four percent. Ah, this is four. Oh, okay. Four percent. <laughs> it's much. This is only four percent of one super module of this. Oh god! It's eight hundred thousand. <laughs> Uh, liquid argon. Liquid argon. Imagine that uh, it took two years, like two years ago in 2016, August, the whole hall was uh, empty. Yeah, so I, rem I remember this. Than two years I remember this. You filled everything. Yes. And imagine that for June, you will have two really small lifts, elevators, that you put down piece by pieces all the components oh, that you construct, all the super modules and the big utility cavern for the safety system, for the readout and the control system. All in one small elevator. Two. We, two two least, small uh, elevators. So you can parallelize the they, they are asking, uh, who dusts all this stuff? <laughs> dusts. <laughs> There are different companies who are responsible yeah. also for the construction. There are a lot of outsourced solutions, but like technology and, uh, and uh, especially for readout electronics, there are different laboratories from all over the world. June has now 160 institutes and labs who are collaborating. Okay. That's great. Yeah, from here you can get a very nice view of the whole hangar that is really, really long. Jeez, very long. Almost 500 meters. Almost 500 meters. Trust me, when you spend a night shift here, we, I think we almost all did. Yeah. It's really... Really? Yes. You enter with the night, you go out with the night. It's, yeah, it's because crazy. you have no windows. It's crazy. Yeah. It's kind of uh, alienating. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was nice. And this is the control room. So, because of course there's like the the CERN control room, which is the main one for the main machine, but every experiment, and that is for the accelerator, but every experiment then has a different one. We are a bit full, but I think it's if you okay. hold up the, yeah, the camera, I will. it's, uh, it's I will, I will. So, the experiment to being uh, operational, it's essential to have a detector control system and a data acquisition system. The control system is responsible for the proper and uh, uh, proper conditions that data taking is meaningful. Mm -hmm. So the liquid argon level is correct, it's uh, cold enough, the purity is uh, perfect to support the 5 millisecond drift and also the high voltage is up. You can see here uh, on that monitor the DCS running. Uh, yeah, there's someone in the, in the middle, it's fine, it's fine. You can see on the data acquisition system on the two monitors that actually at the moment the, the detector is running it's taking ah, it's, cosmic it's data working. without uh, operators basically yeah. so it's in a full autonomous mode and it's just alarms the experts in a case of failure or error and that, in that case the expert is coming here 
uh, eliminates the problem and uh, you can re-enable the given 40 components and uh, continue running. There is an interesting video there that's mm -hmm. completely live. That's ah. the level of the liquid argon in the dual phase uh, prototype <laughs> over there. There are cameras inside and you see the liquid argon on the center actually boiling up. So there is some problem that is warming up on the bottom of the liquid argon, so it slowly evaporates, <coughs> which is not an ideal condition for sure. the gem detection layer on top. <coughs> Alan, this is not a supervised bar, right? No, so I can drink. So here you see also a video uh, that, was, uh, Sorry. that was basically the filling that's just ah. a couple of eight, and then there's just a few centimeters. Oh god, the, and it took like three, four days, no more. Nine days. It was just nine days, and you see the level is really small still. <laughs> so that's why well, you can imagine that filling the whole cryostatic takes uh, a month. <laughs> okay. And I think this is it, guys. Yeah, that. Yeah. Interested? We have amazing activities like we have a cloud chamber, but unfortunately the dry ice is depleted. So ah, okay. So we cannot do that anymore. No, no, no. But here there are also. Scintillator building, there are different activities that we prepared for the visitors and for the, the children that they can also build their own. Uh, ah, let's yeah. do the children <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I ask you for. Can I get some water? Yes, yeah, sure. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, guys, I'm dying. I okay. can hold the gimbal if you want. <clears throat> let's, let's see Antonio's drinking water. <laughs> Drink water. No, maybe it's better if we just have a look From the at the facility. Place. How does this thing work? I don't know how this thing works, okay, guys? So, sorry for the motion sickness. <coughs> I'm also dying of my coughing. So, here you can have a very nice, a very nice view from the top. <coughs> it was a Take kind of a mess. Thing now, <coughs> you want to die? Give me the water. Drink, drink. It was kind of a mess just to reach it because yes, but we got completely the wrong way because we tried to get in from the other side. Uh, and yes, the access is a bit uh, tricky and sophisticated. Nonetheless, yeah. uh, no, we are helping also you know, in the organization. Like the so here there is uh, oscillators. You can also ask for activities for some explanation if the, the guys are willing you know, to participate in live. Yeah. I think this is fine. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much again, and thanks Enjoy from the all the people the that are connected. Ciao. Cheers, Bye. ciao. What do you want to go? They Flav they Flavio is they dead. Have an oscilloscope. They have an oscilloscope, and, and that don't. makes me happy, and I don't. <laughs> but I need to buy one. Yeah, I miss oscilloscope. And here, what is here? It's a, ah, this is a scintillator, I think. Bye, Mr. Guy. Ah, that's, a, that's, that's an FPGA. The, yeah, but that's the... The D18... Uh, D10... No, what, what is the sorry, final size of this type of projector? <laughs> is it like that on the table or much bigger? So these normally are crystals uh, that basically <coughs> one can use to detect particles. And you can put them in an array like this in different direction. So you have an idea where the particle passes by. I don't know, what, what can we do? Can we try to look at uh, NACC, NA62? Maybe, or here? Subscribe to your channel if it's okay. Yeah, yes, yes. It's called Cannot Be Butch. Yeah, uh, we're we're doing some sponsor now live people. So I show it. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Let's show our destroyed faces. Echo go. I'm kind of tired, but yeah. you still got some energy. Yeah, energy. Still some energy. <laughs> uh, maybe we can ask about the Sinti leaders. Let's yeah. let's go because it's. It's free. I think it's, it might be interesting to show. Hi. You got 300 people looking at you. 
Uh, could you, do you mind, like, just maybe give a little <laughs> bit of an explanation? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I shouldn't have told you, I knew, I knew. <laughs> it's absolutely alright, so... Yeah. It's okay, they cannot hurt you. They cannot hurt you. Yeah, yeah I'm absolutely fine. So, uh, <laughs> so. it's, it's, it's your time now. It's, <laughs> it's your time, you've been training for this. For a long time, we believe in you. Okay, cool, so, but I, I heard that you know some physics, right? Yeah, I used to work here. But <laughs> it's not for me, so, it's for... So it's, why don't you do the talk, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you do physics as well? Yeah, yeah. And do the 300 people know physics? At all, nothing. Not they don't know anything. No, they know a bit, but it okay, really depends. So, um, so the, the thing is that in order to study neutrinos, you really must know the, <laughs> the backgrounds. And one of uh, such a background is muons. Uh, because literally neutrinos are coming, they interact with some, uh, some atom, and then they produce uh, muons. Okay, now... In order to sort this muon, you have all sorts of, re uh, all sorts of methods. But one of uh, one of the methods, uh, in order to educate first-year students, mm -hmm. is to, um, to detect the muons through uh, scintillators. So here you have a scintillator. So that's a scintillator. Yes, mm. it's basically a special plastic in which, when the when a charged particle as a muon passes, it produces a spark of light. And this spark of light is um, is transported all the way to here, and um, ah, here yeah. you can see, see the yeah. And uh, basically, in order to detect a cosmic ray muon, you do this: you create layers of this kind of bars, and uh, here, for some random reason, we have five layers okay. out of three, out of which these three layers are equipped. What I mean is that. These guys, these little green uh, uh, sensors, th these are um, picking out the light and through fiber optics they transport the light into these units and these <coughs> units digitize the light. They, they make it into zero and ones. And um, then we take the amount of light which was digitized here, we put it into code and we produce these things. Oh, but this is live! Yeah, no, not really live. This is <laughs> something we recorded like a week ago. Okay. But um, it looks live. So no, it uh, looks yeah, live, yeah, so yeah, I shouldn't yeah, have asked. Yeah. You could have lied, you know. <laughs> He's a very honest guy. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, Thumbs okay. up for the honest guy. There's a lot of love in the chat <laughs> for you, don't worry. So, that... and, uh, so we see here a reconstruction of a muon crossing through these layers. So we can see that only these mid three layers are active as expected, because only the three mid-layers have the cables. Makes sense. And uh, we see the blue dots uh, in which literally the muon is passing. And the red line is the expected track of the party. Did you see that? Yeah. It, it was completely off. Yeah. So sometimes the experiment is wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's electronics. And there's nothing we can do about it. Not related <laughs> to bugs in the code. It's not. It's clearly code. not related to no, big bugs in the code. Electronics. <laughs> what we call tracking efficiency. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> tracking efficiency. Yeah, this is a classical setup for this kind of uh, yes. of stuff for yes. cosmic rays. Just because putting it into layers, three different layers, sometimes from different direction, one can reconstruct exactly where it passed. Uh, based on how the various modules light up, so you can see exactly how a small, simple, like tracking um, algorithm works. Basically, checks checks where the particles have passed and forms a line. Just to give an idea. Okay. Yeah, so you uni you're from University of Geneva? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. From Union of Geneva. I'm doing my PhD in TPCs. Oh, so okay. I don't have anything to do with this. Uh, I know, it's okay, but it's a nice experiment. It's a... Okay. Well, Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you from, and, uh, the, from the chat as well. Thank you very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye bye, guys. So, you can also have a selfie. Yeah, we have to take a selfie. With the monkey <laughs> of the detector. <laughs> really? In the background. Yes. Yeah. So, this is an actual clean room. Oh, where we do a this sample. used to be an actual clean room. This oh, used to I be, mean, once we, we got in. It's gonna be cleaned again after opening. You are going to create fire, no? 
I'm a computer scientist, so I don't know that many details <laughs> in particle <laughs> physics and things. Uh, but so we did move some equipment to the side in order to accommodate the Mike of the de uh, detector. Actually, it's a cryostat, which basically works like an isolation that Let's keeps the uh, uh, sides of the detector cool. Okay. Uh, so that the heat doesn't get in. And it does look like this. So it does, yeah. We, he told us about this particular design that they use in order to minimize the pressure. It's a patent of yeah. a French company. We, we have to repeat that, otherwise we get sued. So no, it's I a patent. No, no, I'm not just kidding. <laughs> basically, this is helping to endure the huge strain that uh, you have from the cold liquid argon. And the, the whole cryostat is shrinking a couple of centimeters. When it's reaching, uh, oh, it's still shrinking a couple of. No, not not still, but when you are when you ah when down, you pull it, it shrinks. Which is the wow. temperature of the liquid argon? Approx two minus hundred Celsius. Okay. Wow. Two hundred. Yeah. Two. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, right now in uh, NP zero two, which is black and white, I remember correctly. Uh, we have uh, on the bottom eighty six Kelvin, which is roughly hundred eighty something yeah. degrees Celsius minus. 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 Yeah. 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 Then we can see a very nice use of the <laughs> of the VTX5 FPGA evaluation board. Oh my God! So many nights lost on I that. I think probably yeah. we'll need to crouch because it was no set for uh, children. I don't ah. Know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will. Uh, okay. If it's on, I hope. It's not Power on. Power on. Power on. on. One. Random button pressing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do it. No, this is such a shame. Oh god, push the button. No. Push the button. No. I promise the detector is working with me. <laughs> <laughs> Classic sir. Yeah. Nothing works. That's part of the game. No. <laughs> let's 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 <laughs> <laughs> Actually, actually no, no, no. There is a there is a hidden camera and they want just to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the That's fine. Real hardware they say. Real hardware, real problems. The uh, website which uh, displays all the values of the um, of the sensors being in the cryostat. Uh, right now, we had to close it, uh, unfortunately, for the public, and we use only certain accounts. But I can show you this website if you want. So it does display actual values from sensors, not live, but with a small delay because, as an additional security layer, we are using archived data and not live data, yeah, sure. which makes sense. So if you want, uh, let's find the uh, computer. Actually, my computer is all there showing the VR. Uh, <laughs> it's being used for the VR experience. Yes. Yeah. Guys, many thanks again for joining and enjoy the <laughs> rest of the day. Thanks, thanks yeah, for thanks for being yeah, so thank kind. So yeah, you. maybe I'll just have to use my phone. <laughs> and uh, as I see, all the computers are being used right now. So, do you need something to show? Yeah, show how big the concrete, this uh, the yeah, concrete yeah, slabs. Yeah, put a person, put a, a person in uh, reference. Like yeah, it. but put a slim person, a slim sexy person like mm -hmm. Stefano. Yeah. There, just do some sexy. You can do some sexy poses. Uh, no. And this is a bunch of other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these are actually for radiation protection. Yes. yes. So yeah. The beam goes in the middle of this. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we don't receive the same energy as LHC does because we just do you know prototypes. And I can tell you that the radiation levels at CERN, and you will confirm this, are very low. And I would say that. At least the radiation that is reaching us from LHC, even when it is on, is lower than the radiation which we as humans emanate. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, I mean, you're completely... It's very low. It's not enough. Always, as I always say, as a physicist, I've taken way more radiation traveling to conferences by plane than... Exactly. Yeah, that, and, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I recently saw... Uh, it was just right here, yeah, on one of these uh, uh, panels that... Uh, the flight attendants and pilots should regularly check their radiation levels because they do fly a lot. And the higher you go into the atmosphere, the more radiation exposure you get. Because you get less shielding from the atmosphere, exactly. basically. Exactly. That's the point. And, uh, yes, so you do need login. And 
UFC. I didn't show you the password of... <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I, that's why I moved. <laughs> The crane is always great. Okay, let's. No, that is massive. <coughs> okay, due to the fact that I have uh, increased phone size and um, stuff like that, my phone is probably not the best. Uh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah, because it's not going to be in its place where it is on uh, the computers. But uh, it uh, gives you an idea. So, this is an image of the cryostat. Which, yeah, it's the big are, Lego block. Yeah, yeah basically. So, <laughs> but I mean, they're both red. Yeah. But this one is the one in the far corner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we call it NP04 or uh, single face. For that, you have to ask physicists. Why. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we on the, the main page, uh, you get uh, the pressure, outer pressure, inside pressure, some of the temperatures which are in Kelvin, uh, also the valve opening percentage, so incoming and outgoing gas, basically, and to be on the safe side. And then the best part that I like the most, but the, okay, on this one the cameras are off, so just let me check one Yeah. Flavio drinking. Flavio drinking, Flavio drinking, it's... See, I Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, yeah. my friends. Love you dying. Love you dying, yeah. You like complete... tomorrow, I don't have to talk. <laughs> but you're still on a shift tomorrow. Yes, there we go. Oh, jeez. Okay. okay. Uh, this is a bit better optimized, I hope. Oh, yes. okay. And this, okay, this is still not scrollable, but we can go on to another page, which will show us the temperatures, uh, internal temperatures. And this example. is live data. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, Maybe a couple of... But it's kind yeah. of live. It's Twitch live data. It's Twitch yeah. live data. I mean, yeah, basically. We got eight seconds of uh, delay anyway. All right. So. so here in the active dual phase, uh, because it's active and you do have actual liquid argon inside, you can see that the temperatures, even on the top, are below 100 K Kelvin, which roughly means minus 173 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's... Pretty, pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> we do also track ambient humidity, temperature and pressure, which is also a nice tool if you want to, uh, you know, confirm if Meteor Swiss is uh, issuing the correct <laughs> data. And uh, then the best part of the website and the most beautiful, if you ask me, are the live camera streams. But this is, this is free? Uh, it's accessible now. No, this is it's not under, um, it's like, okay. under account. Uh, internal yeah. tenant. Yes. Well, unfortunately, now <laughs> most of the websites it's shown are yes. only, only the real public ones. Uh, yes, public. exactly. So You can see the cameras from here. Yes. And TPC let me check corner. If it's on. Because due to this setup, uh, we can uh, have up to six cameras live at the same time. So oh, nice. I, I'm just going to have to check which ones are on exactly. Okay. Hmm. All right, let's see. This will do us... Yes. Oh, this is working. Oh, here it is. So it's on top of the... Uh, uh, like the... Yeah, top of the cryostat, and you actually see the liquid argon surface. And, uh, well, right now we are working on even removing all these fluctuations and the waves and... But there are some bubbles, so waves are okay. I mean, but bubbles are not, because yeah. it means it's boiling. Uh, yes, I think so. But it's again, physics will just... the efficiency, no? Uh, it's something to do with high voltage systems that were oh, doing yes, yes. some wrong things. Again, I'm not a physicist, so <laughs> I'm just telling you what I hear from time to time in the control room. And yes, we do have other cameras as well. and. The quality is more or less all right for a camera connected to a Raspberry Pi. And yeah. so we have two Raspberry Pis, each support uh, three, up to three cameras live at the same time. Mm. And we did have to use uh, some special software to put the live streams online because RTSP plugins are disabled since several years. <laughs> yeah, so we did have to use like uh, HTML5 video and yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So thank you very much. For thank you very much. Thank no, you. it's fine. And yeah. I hope thank you very much for your time. You yeah. find lots of interesting stuff. Yeah. And, and you found many. One advertisement also for your public is that for underground visits we are open at CERN because the LHC is uh, shut down for upgrade and mm -hmm. for sure it's until the end of the year, maybe even until the March. And we do recommend that you do underground visits not during open days. Yeah, because it's crowded. It's crowded and plus it's better if we allow people who are coming from far away to yes. go downstairs. Yes. Yeah, if, you if you really live in the area, don't come to the open days to see the LHC. Yes. This is why, for example, <coughs> we decided not to show yes. any the... experiment during our life. It's you, Josal. Yes. Thank you for the sub. You're here. You yes. see? You went on streaming the whole time, like with yeah. your name under it, yeah, under you. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, it is a recommendation also of organizing committee to visit experimental areas during open days because yeah. they are open only. Only on open. Yeah, yes. only on the open yeah, days. Either you are a member of the personnel or you cannot come. In. Yeah, exactly. Normally, but Normal. under you know underground, you can always go. You get a guide and. Yes, you do have some. Uh, nice museum called Microcosm in the reception building which is open all year and you do have some above ground visits during the whole year which visits dot yeah. yes. <laughs> and it serves more or less as an average 800 600 800 people per day yeah so it's uh, no sorry per week rough statistics from uh, I think last year were 135,000 visitors during the year in total and yes, we do have our own domain, uh, top level domains on God's own. Yes. Now so we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. Thank you very, thank much. very much. Thanks yeah. also for the sub. Yeah. Cheers. You're welcome. We can thank you live. live thank you. We, can, we can thank, you know, people live for subs. This is yeah. something new for us. Okay, so where do you want to go? Try to go back to the base. Well, we NA, NA62? NA62? Uh, it's No, you don't think... It takes more than a thing. more? Yeah, Are we back? We're back. Yay. We should be back. Ciao everyone. We're back. Are we back? Ciao. Can you confirm that we are back, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like this today. I'm sorry. It's it's kind of a mess in this area, but I hope you enjoy the whole yeah. thing. We yeah, started we to show you the experimental area and the control room because we thought it were very cool. <coughs> yeah. I hope you liked that. Yeah, that was I think the the coolest part we showed you. But no, it's the chat that is not connecting, so that's not a good sign. Mm, but the video is going. It seems it's going, I'm not sure, because, of course, if, if the chat that did something symbol is not going, can you go figure about the whole streaming? Yeah, streaming seems to be going fine. No, it should be okay. There's a shuttle there. Oh, my God. We're here. They're there. Yay, there's a shuttle. But maybe just stays there. Just go... Open the CERN, see the professor. No, I think it just look, oh, looks the one that we should have taken, taken before in, in, instead of walking like idiots for half an hour. But we're walkers, we know that we're walkers. Okay, guys, so I think our small uh, our stream is coming to an end because yeah. I think we can uh, close it because now will be the boring part of us like oh, going back. Oh, okay. I like the... No, I don't know, guys. If you have like, like a part of our last or, question, or they, they last, last time for yeah, questions, guys. Yeah, it's a, it's Q&A, Q&A, Q&A session. Q &A, Q &A session. We close it unless, oh my God, what? There's 1,500 people now. Q&A now, <laughs> 1.5k. I think Twitch is going mad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the um, the open days now are closing for today. Tomorrow they're still open. We're slowly going back. If you have any questions, uh, se avete domande anche in italiano. Eh, Uh, va benissimo cerchiamo di rispondere mentre okay, torniamo eh, cerchiamo di rispondere anche se ci date dei feedback su come è andato oggi also yeah, would you like to, to see switch. another stream like this for example tomorrow no, yeah. no. not tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow is no, kind of hard for example we yeah. didn't show you today any of the LHC experiments 
yeah. but, we but in can the future if you want so if you <coughs> if you think that it you would appreciate to see <coughs> us showing you let's see Nadia, come si chiama? Allora, io sono Federico II Napoli. Sapienza. 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 Eh, la questione della fisica è colpa di una combo fra. La è Brian Green, l'universo elegante. Ma sì, addirittura. Eh, che coatto che sei. Raga, eh, sì, non c'ho niente da fare con l'estate. A me Piero, sì. Poi però mi sembra che poi però era tutto meccanica e cose. Piero Angela pesante, no? Come? Poi mi sembra che Piero Angela pesante, no? Ah, Piero, Piero. Sopra. Stasera Maradona e tutti gli Half-Life. No, stasera ah, no, c'è la Bressanini, pe... cavolo, non abbiamo incontrato Bressanini. Non abbiamo incontrato Bressanini, mi è andata così. Stasera no. andiamo a scrivere, andiamo a scrivere a Bressanini. Volete lo streaming di noi che se andiamo a Ambriagarus? No. <ride> Alla festa del vino. <ride> you wanna see the super computing stack? Yeah, that would be cool to see, but I think that is accessible loading also during uh... no, the data center. Yeah, I think the data center. Uh, from outside yes, from inside no. But actually the stream inside would be super loud. Yeah, we it's show kind of you hard. our data center, the LHCB data center, for example, which is <coughs> more modern design. The main problem with the certain data center is that the building itself has been built in the 70s. And of course, the requirement for computing in the 70s were different, different from the requirement, <laughs> yeah. the physical, no, like how big the room has to be, how much power you need, how much cooling you need. So they try to update it. The problem is that we need a data center. We can't just shut it down, yeah, destroy it and build a new building. It's kind of hard to do. It's, But, yeah, it's pretty impressive though. We, we could organize a visit from the visit point there. No, but we'll see because now we got contact with the, uh, with the press office here. Well, the uh, social media manager. The social media, I mean, part the of the office, press yes. and in general, they were very mm. kind with us. And since this streaming is like, it went very well. Yeah, <laughs> like, I would say so. <laughs> Thank you guys. Based on your reaction, on your feedback and on yeah. the little numbers that we <laughs> see on stream, It seems it went very well, so I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe we can talk with them and convince them to do this again. There are a bit again. of uh, experiment and nice things, things to show, show yes. yeah. That are done, there are plenty uh, of things to at certain, so. They're asking, which uh, kind of job did you, di did you, you did or you're doing now at CERN? I I'll start, I worked on the IT, in IT, and... Uh, For my thesis, I worked on, um, uh, let's say, new, pro, new compilers for FPGAs. So in order to create complex electronics starting from an high-level language like C or OpenCL, stuff like that. And then I worked in the radio protection, like doing actual uh, electronic design. So probably that's why I asked before if the new radiation system was on because it's the radiation stuff I worked monitoring. on. Radiation monitoring system. <laughs> yeah, the radi radiation system sounds like a bit... <laughs> radiation monitoring system. <laughs> Chrome. And um, so I worked on that. I worked in the electronic design of these things. And now I'm working in neuroscience, so I moved somewhere else. Flavio? So I started with the LHCB experiment. I'm still with the LHCB experiment. I started with the online team. I still with the online team. So what I do basically is I work for the for the data acquisition part so basically what goes from well we have the data in our detector we need to collect it so we need some networking technologies i'm specialized in networking <clears throat> even though i'm a physicist um happens want which one you don't want and so you have basically to look at those 40,000 pictures per second uh very quickly and say ah i want to save it or not and this is more or less kind of what i do So now we are making a major upgrade of our detector and we will switch to a complete new data acquisition system with new networking technologies, new everything. Uh, this will be very fast. The total throughput of our data acquisition network will be 40 terabit per second, mm -hmm. which is a big number. Oh, <coughs> great. B2. So I'm the, uh, uh, really the only one that doesn't work that so. But um, eh? no, come on, But no. I did the, my, my master thesis it, it with a group and we did uh, the study of the, um, like detect system, the detector part of the uh, medical scanner that we were building here at the ESPS facility, so here in the uh, big room that we were uh, before. And I, with this project, I work on image reconstruction and the analysis of the perfected performance.
be our task. And research and development. In that building oh, in order, there, actually. Yeah, in that building, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, I thought it's silicon crystals to improve the performance of the accelerator, uh, both, let's say, uh, mainly LHC, let's say. The, I mean, we wanted to improve that. And then I moved to the same experiment as Flavio, LHCB, where and I am doing some physics analysis and I'm also working on the monitoring software of what Flavio was telling you before. So. My, the monitoring, monitoring system just that this electric so that's it yeah and it's a very important task, task. yeah yeah it's yeah <coughs> if so your data is garbage you don't want to know it two, two years yeah. after you want to know it right now <laughs> yeah so, so that we you can fix be, what's wrong yeah we need to be <coughs> fast quick and uh, correct things as quick uh, as fast as possible in the meantime, they ask, I'm considering working there after graduation. Do I need a refeller for an interview? No, just mm. go on careers. No, I mean, you will just need a... Depending a on the position. Depending Usually on... you need a reference letter from your professor, and this is normal yes. for every position. Then if you have the chance, you can join a, one of the student programs. This is usually yeah, maybe nice... before graduating, actually. Yeah, that's before graduating. After ah. you just, yeah, for example, you can suggest... apply for a postdoc, a fellowship. <clears throat> you just go on the career page and you apply. Um, yeah. We would, yeah. let's say, we would suggest to you to apply, for example, for a technical student. Yeah, because it that's is, how I arrived easier, here. It's easier. easier to get the, instead yeah. of applying for a doctoral position or a fellowship position. So if you still have time, you can be a technical student. So you will be enrolled in the uni, but you will work here at CERN. That's, that's yeah. the idea. The thing is this, for a student program, it's not a lot of investment in money for the group. So even if they don't know you or they're not sure, they, um, it's more likely for them to, uh, let's say, risk it and get a complete outsider. Okay. Then after they know you, maybe they will Okay. I mean, but if, if but this good. is not this is not for granted. I know many people that have never been here. They just applied immediately for the fellowship. Boom, they got it. But of course, you have to be Super. outstanding. Okay. Yeah. In general, for working here, you need uh, a good CV. I would say. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but if I want to go to what do you want to do? I have a car in Milan, so if we can get can the bus to Milan, that will be great. Ah, but we have to wait then half an hour because I cannot drive it before 7.30. Okay, uh, we'll go there slowly, we'll, like, we'll uh, relax a bit, maybe, yeah. at some point. I mean, show, fire brigade. Yeah, show the fire brigades and yeah. everyone working for this event. Yeah, yeah there's a I mean, shitload of people working. Also, there's a guy with the Dodge. And, but there's a lot of people working on this stuff. Corvette also, yeah, because because why not? We will sit in near Geneva. Yeah, yeah, it's near Geneva. Where does it go? I think those go to Meran, okay? <laughs> but yeah, maybe we can stop here. What do you say? Uh, selfie a fine stream, of course. We do a selfie. Big selfie. Big selfie. There aren't any more. Uh, Questions or uh, doubts or uh, yeah, it's not a dodge. It's a Corvette. The, uh, sorry, I said it's a dodge. There is one shuttle every thirty minutes. So maybe every to... thirty minutes. So maybe we want to take this one. <laughs> okay, but this is starting now. I have no idea. No, I don't know. Every thirty minutes is a lot. Oh, frequency thirty minutes. I mean, we are physics. We know. So... Yeah, we know frequency. <laughs> also, a shuttle now. No, so no yeah, dodge, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, this was the entrance. I don't know if you saw it before. Furetto, yes, uh, il video rimarrà per poterlo vedere in stop. Lo sarà fra i VOD del canale. Scusa, fra, sarà fra i VOD del canale. Poi noi lo scaricheremo e lo metteremo su YouTube. Su YouTube, come sempre per archiviazione. Ma in realtà lo metteremo anche, penso, fra i VOD di 
fissi di Twitch insomma noi veramente vogliamo ringraziarvi di tutto per essere stati con noi per il supporto per le domande speriamo che vi sia piaciuto un esperimento del genere era la prima volta che uno streaming del genere avveniva su Twitch yes you need a photo bomb you need a photo bomb my landlord is your landlord best landlord ever I never saw anything <laughs> and quindi beh speriamo speriamo vi sia piaciuta speriamo sia andato tutto bene thank you very much also to our international viewers yes. it's the first time yeah. that we do this is a is a is a first time for Twitch on a yeah world level yeah. basically yeah, yeah. we hope I mean it went very well we're super happy I don't I, I mean you can we cannot see it now because we're super tired as well <laughs> uh, it was kind of hard to, to, to walk for a whole day showing um, you stuff around but it was great it's something that I will do tomorrow if I could so again so thank you very much guys we hope you to see you again soon thank you for all the subs follow thank you for all, everything and we will uh, we will leave now and we will go back to Geneva I mean, hopefully we can catch that bus before yeah, speriamo yeah, yeah. di prendere il bus dove prendiamo il bus prendiamo il bus aspetta prendiamo l'autobus hi oh yeah hold on Ok, vabbè aspetta, prendiamo l'autobus <ride> E non c'era meno posto Vai, vai Qua siamo tranquilli E qui niente This was the, this is the cherry on top This is the cherry yeah. cool. Ciao ragazzi Ciao guys, ciao, ciao, ragazzi. ciao guys Bye bye Sì